Hello everybody, it's Stephen here for The Idiot Quilter and welcome to my weekly episode, episode number 143 for November the 30th, 2021. And I hope you had a good week. And I imagine now that Thanksgiving in the States is all over with and Black Friday is all over with and Cyber Monday is all over with, you're probably, if you haven't already, uh, have started concentrating on getting your Christmas decorations up and starting to get everything together for Christmas Day. I mean, it's only, what, 25 days away as I make this recording. So, yeah, um, actually, I spent all day yesterday putting up my Christmas decorations, and, uh, yeah, mine don't look anything like uh, the designer ones that you see on YouTube. Um, but I'm decorated. You can see part of them in the background there. I've got some Christmas uh, uh, wall hangings up that I made last year and this year. And uh, yeah, I'll probably do a little house tour of my Christmas decorations on a future video. Okay, let's move right into what I have been working on. And I just need to clear my throat for just a second. <clears throat> okay, I do these videos too early in the morning. I'm still kind of, you know, the way you are when you first get up. Okay, so let's start with uh, my Lone Star quilt. It is done. And I'm very happy to say it's done. And let me throw up a picture here as I talk about it. And there it is. I am very, very pleased with this. This was challenging because there are Y seams. Now, I've had a few people reach out to me and say, why did you do Y seams? Why didn't you do this in strips? Well, it is in strips. It doesn't look like it. When I say the Y seams and that there were a lot of them, I'm not talking about these individual diamonds that you see on here. No, these blades, there are eight blades in this quilt. Each blade was made up of six jelly roll strips sewn together. Then those were cut into six, four, six strips at a 45 degree angle, which gives you these colors that run through the blades. Now where the Y seams come in is putting the blades together. So there's a Y seam here and a Y seam here and a Y seam here, here etc. And then there's more Y seams when you put the in the triangles of white and the squares of white. So there's a Y seam at this point and there's a Y seam at this point. So yeah there are definitely Y seams in this and yes there are patterns out there that you can do where you can you can avoid Y seams but I didn't want to avoid Y seams on this particular project because this class I took purposely to learn how to do Y seams. Um, I have done Y seams in the past. I taught myself uh, well taught myself in terms of like I went on to YouTube and found some tutorials and they are not difficult but they are tedious and most people avoid them and I intend to be one of those people too if I can in the future but this one I wanted to learn how to do the Y seam so thank you for you know trying to make my life easier by making me aware that you can do a lone star using strips without Y seams I knew that I'm just a sucker for pain okay but anyways I have it done now I deviated a little bit from the pattern as I often do because these borders, there are three of them. These borders were supposed to be in, well, this one was supposed to be done in white, the same as this. Um, and if I had done that in white, well, I didn't want to do it in white um, because I just didn't. I thought there was enough white. So I went into my strip collection and I found some very dark blue. This is not black, this is blue, this inner first border, and put those on. And I wanted it, you know, to stand out, to contrast with the white, to make the white pop more. Then they did have instructions on how to do a border like this second border, except uh, the pieces weren't on a diagonal. They were done, you know, straight across. Basically, what do you call that? A uh, keyboard, a piano keyboard? type of border but I had fabric left over from when I cut these blades and they're already in diagonals so I had enough of those that I could cut them the two and a half inch strips sew them together and go all the way around the star 
Now, of course, if I had thought about it a little bit more, I might have been able to get have gotten the corners to match a little better so they wouldn't be so random. Um, but, you know, that was more advanced mathematics and I wasn't interested in that. And I don't mind. It doesn't bother me. So, you know, basically rule of thumb here when you're doing a quilt. If it doesn't bother you, then do it. Don't worry about bothering anybody else because it's not their quilt. Okay, it's your quilt. <clears throat> Excuse me again. So, um, away I went. But here's where I ran into a little bit of a problem. And I've never really had this problem before. I pick colors pretty fast. I don't usually get snagged up on what colors I'm going to use in a quilt. And uh, when I came to the outside border, I got snagged. I tried... <clears throat> I'll be right back. Sorry about that. I'm back now. Um, this outside border, the yellow border, I didn't know what color to use. You see, I have all these colors in this border. And anything I picked that was close to these colors, or were these colors, it made a piece of the border back basically disappear. So, for example, if I'd used white in here, these white pieces would blend right in with the white, <clears throat> and it would look like you, you didn't finish something. It just it looked off balance. I tried shades of blue, I tried shades of purple, I tried even shades of pink, um, and I even tried black. And I wasn't happy with any of those. I had Walter uh, with me and we were trying to look for fabrics in my stash, we looked for fabrics in his stash, and we didn't find anything that was really screaming out at us. So off we went to Ultimate Sewing, and I'd taken this picture of the quilt with me, and um, we looked. Well, we still weren't having a lot of luck. So we kind of thought, well, maybe a black, but a black with a very light print on it of some sort um, in a sort of a gray. You know, you can come up with these great ideas about what you want, but finding the actual fabric is another story. So we did find something that I thought might work, brought it home, hated it, was not going to work. So this time I packed up the whole quilt at that point. And off we went to a different quilting store uh, in our area. And we looked around in there. Well, I found this yellow within five minutes and it just jumped off the shelf at me and screamed, yes, I want to be part of your quilt. So I held the quilt up against it and I said, you know, I had toyed with the color orange or yellow. I didn't have any yellow appropriate in my stash because yellow and orange are two colors I don't buy a lot of. I don't use a lot of. Um, I don't dislike those colors. I just don't really, you know, kind of gravitate towards those for a quilt. So when I saw the yellow and I showed it to Walter and we both said, yep, that's the one. And I'm so glad that that's the one that I did use because I think it really makes the pieced border uh, pop out, but it also makes the whole star itself pop as well. So I think it was a good choice. And then when it came to the backing, you can see a little bit of it here. It's K-facet fabric that I had enough of. And it's got many of the colors that are on the front side of the quilt in it. Although it doesn't really matter when you do a backing. But I really liked it for the binding as well. So I did the binding and the backing in the same fabric. When it came to quilting it, <clears throat> I threw it on Lucy. And I use this pantograph, which is all these little curvy lines, because I have been told or I've read or I've seen on YouTube, people often say, if your quilt pattern has a lot of linear lines to it, it's a lot of straight lines and angles, then a curved quilting pattern um, works well with something like that. And I think this pattern did work well um, with it. As I said, it was a pantograph, and I used, okay, again, I was kind of thinking, what color can I use um, as my quilting thread? And yes, there were, I put out some blue, I put out some purple, I put out some orangey and goldy colored ones, but I settled on one that's a little bit radical. It's actually called lipstick. It is a pink color. Now, I know it doesn't really show up, here in the video. Um, I'm just trying to show you a little. No, it doesn't really show up. And actually, 
it it is fairly subtle um but it gave me the texture that i wanted in the border and in the white areas and at the same time it didn't take away from the colors and the pattern of the lone star itself so i was very very happy uh with that choice of color the backing i used uh a light shade of blue and so on the backing you don't really see until you're right up close the actual quilting on it um again i tend to be very uh, cautious about the colors that i pick for quilting uh i should get a little bolder um especially on the backings a little bit more uh so um but it was a very busy backing so it wouldn't have mattered really what color I picked. I don't think any color I picked would have really stood out with the way that the, the backing looks. i sorry I didn't take a picture of the backing to show you. So I am very pleased with this. This is done. And today is my last uh, session in this class for the Lone Star. Um, I worked ahead because uh, I was anxious to get this finished. And uh, yeah it's done so i'm going to go in and take it and gloat <laughs> i am i'm going to gloat i am very proud of this quilt and ha and haven't helped anybody who says anything negative about it well nobody will because you know as quilters we're not like that at least not to each other's face uh, so um yeah i'm really happy with this did i say how happy i was with this yeah i'm happy with this okay so i'm sorry about my throat it keeps cutting in and cutting out on me. I hope I'm not coming down with something. No, it's not COVID, okay? <laughs> I hope. Uh, no, it's not. Yeah, <clears throat> It's just this time of the day, for some reason, I get a little congested. Okay, enough about my health. Let's move on to another project I'm working on. Now, as I said, the Lone Star... Um, I didn't work ahead. I did what I had to do according to the instructions from Sharon, the instructor, uh, to be prepared for the next class. With the exception of this last one, at that point we were uh, moving into borders this week. I knew I could handle the borders, and as I said, I deviated from the plan, so um, I'm done. But while I was working in the class on these and doing my homework, I decided to start a second quilt. Now, the second quilt was, I just wanted something that was a little mindless to do, right? You know, clear the creative palette. Because, as I said, this this project, this Lone Star, was very intense, okay? Um, so your brain was kind of fried after you um, worked on this for a while. So I just want something that I could just, you know, keep my mojo going, but uh, my sojo... Or, you know, you know, but I didn't have to really worry about it. So I got looking through my project boxes and there's one I have labeled orphan blocks. And it's where a blocks that I test out or that I don't like uh, that when I got them made or were left over from a project, I just throw them in that box. So I thought I'd get them out and make a quilt out of them. And I'm really happy with how it's going. I'm not done yet. I don't know when it's going to be done because I keep adding to it. Um, I'm using up a lot of my orphan blocks. I'm using up scrap strips and things like that that I have laying around. And you may not like this. I'm going to show it to you. But there it is so far. Yes, it is wild. Um, and it's bright and it's bold. And it's everything you can think of in this. Um, and I'm loving it. I am absolutely loving it um as i said i've got i have more orphan blocks some orphan blocks i take and i cut in half or cut into strips or whatever um i don't think about it uh too much now there is a little bit of planning in this um like for example these pieces i have a little symmetry going on here and here and uh i have a little bit more going in here too so Although I said it's not really overtaxing my brain, I'm just doing whatever I feel like, I have sort of a plan. And when I say I have a plan, it doesn't mean I know what this thing's going to look like when it's finished. It's as I'm working on each section of it, I sort of organize my pieces in some form or fashion. Um, 
I'm going to call it the orphan quilt because it's made up of orphan blocks. So here, up here, you can see this was a block. I cut it in half. Um, but I'm having a lot of fun with this. Um, it's just amazing how it turns out as you're working on it. I mean, it's not for everybody, I'm sure. Um, but I'm loving it. I really am. I think it's the colors in it. And I'm not worried about the placement of the colors. They're every color in the rainbow. So, yeah. So when I get this done, um, I'll show it to you then. Um, I'm getting kind of excited about getting it finished uh, so I can throw it on the long arm because I really don't know what I'm going to do as a long arm pattern on this. I'm debating whether I should just throw all caution in the wind as I have already with this quilt and do free motion. Just practice some free motion on it. Because for one thing, if I use a light enough color thread, well, present a, a situation, what color thread would I use on this? Um, I maybe, why should I get worried about what the quilting is going to look like on it? So I think we'll see what, what happens with it. But it's really cleansed my palette um, after doing the Lone Star. And um, I'm just having fun with it. And that's what quilting's all about, right? Okay, so what's been happening in the past week? Well, you know, I'm having a little problem with this beastie behind me, my embroidery machine. <clears throat> I took it into the shop, had them fix the, the thread cutter on it. Thread cutter worked about twice and it now it won't work at all. Um, I don't know what the problem was is. So I took it in last Tuesday to Ultimate Sewing. But unfortunately, what I didn't know is surely the owner was on holidays. And the rest of the staff didn't seem to know what to do. If I have one criticism about Ultimate Sewing, it's that the staff, when Shirley isn't there, are really, many of them really don't know what they're supposed to do when something like, or someone like me walks in and wants something repaired or whatever. So I didn't want to put a little stress on the ladies there. So I said, fine, I'll just bring it in when she's back and she's supposed to be back in there today I think so I'll take it in when I go for my class and um, see what Shirley can do I'm a little pissed off um, and the pissed off is not with Shirley or with Roy the technician okay these things happen it must have worked for Roy well it worked for me on the first simple little project that I did on it it cut a couple of times and then it stopped cutting and I thought, well, is it something that's embedded within the embroidery uh, program that I'm using? Uh, because that can happen sometimes in the way that they are designed. But I tried a couple of others that I know that are tried and true. And no, it just will not cut. And I observed some other unusual things as well. So in she goes again. I'm glad that right now I'm not really doing, I have most of my, well, I have all of my Christmas embroidery done and I don't have any great immediate plans for doing some more embroidery. Oh, I always have embroidery to do because I love doing machine embroidery, as you know. Um, but yeah, so that's one thing that's on my plate today. Um, just as an aside, recently I've had a, a batch of new subscribers that have found me and I really appreciate them finding me and sticking with me and, and that kind of thing. That's great. Um, and I certainly don't mind it when people, you know, contact me with questions and things like that. However, I've been getting, um, from more than one person, I've been getting questions about machine embroidery and, um, I'm happy to help, but I can't make the decisions for you. Okay. I have been asked by a couple of people which machine they should buy? Well, that's a loaded question. Um, you know, they're asking me the difference between a couple of models. I only own the 550E. That's the only one I'm really, really comfortable talking about. Um, I used to have a 15,000, which is a combination machine, as you know, and I'm not going near that machine again. I got rid of it, and you know why, and if you don't know why, if you're new here, just do a search in my, well, I have a whole playlist about my woes with the 15,000 machine, so you can watch those if you're interested and find out why I do not own a 15,000 anymore. Um, but I've loved the 550E, but people are asking me questions like, 
you know, what's the difference between it and another machine? Well, I don't know. Um, you know, for the most part, I know a little bit on, you know, certain other models, but I really don't know. And my uh, opinions that I express on here are just that opinions based on my experience with this machine. So I'm happy to help where I can. But in a couple of cases, people wanted me, it seemed to make the decision for them like I'm a dealer. I'm not a dealer. Okay. And I'm sorry if you're going to a dealer and you're not getting the answers to your questions that you should be getting from a dealer. Or if you're buying a machine online. I'll just say it. That's a mistake. I'm sorry. It's a mistake to buy a machine online. You need to go to somebody who actually has the machines in their store and know what they're talking about. And you can ask them questions. If you're buying it online, if you're buying it from Amazon, if you're buying it from an online store that's far away from you or whatever, you're asking for some frustration, I feel. So, yeah, go to the experts, okay? As I said, I'm flattered that people should think that I'm an expert about this stuff. Maybe I come across like that because... Okay, yeah, I, I do say things with a certain amount of confidence. Um, but I don't know everything. I share with you what I do know, however. So, buyer beware, okay? Um, I wouldn't purposely mislead you about things. But, you know, check out other opinions. Uh, I've told a couple of people, do the research. It's important that you do the research. YouTube has lots and lots of videos about various embroidery machines. Check them out. Um, look at the reviews on Google. Uh, there's a lot of information out there. Yes, it's going to take time. And you are going to find conflicting opinions as well. But that's the nature of the beast. If you're going to invest this kind of money in an embroidery machine then you want to be well armed. And that means investing some of your time in doing the research. Don't just depend upon one person's uh, opinion about it. Get a variety. Okay, coming back to what else is new? Well, I did a little black shop, black shop, black Friday shopping. Um, and I went to one of my favorite uh, online stores. It's Canadian. It's called Lindley General Store. I have reviewed them before and I got some good deals. Now, we did, Walter and I did on So Chatty this past week, we did a whole thing about Black Friday sales and are there really deals to be had when it comes to buying quilting things online. And we compared six different online stores. And so if you're interested in what we said about all of those things, then check that out. But I did find a good sale on Lindley and I'm going to show you on here uh, what I got and here it is just let me blow it up a little bit so you can see it better yeah there we go okay I got a really good deal on these fabrics there's two meters of each of these fabrics that I bought and the way they set up their sale was a little bit unique they had four boxes I think 25% off, 30%, 35% off, and 40%, something like that. I immediately clicked on the 40% off box, and they had a really good selection of fabrics in that section that were on sale. Now, the thing, too, was they compounded their sale. What I mean by that is if they had something already on sale, like something that was already, say, 10% off, you got to add the say the 40 percent on top of it so you got 50 percent off or if it was 35 you got 45 percent off that kind of thing so i thought it was a really good sale so i went in filled my cart with the fabrics you see here um this line uh, is one i've had before i think it's called no i'm not sure what it's called now and i did write these out so I could tell you and do you think I can find the piece of paper that I did this on nope I can't or can I no I can't just a second I'll be right back 
Okay, I found that little piece of paper. All right, this set here, these four, are actually called Bliss Bold and Bright Reflections. And, uh, of course, I can't tell you who they're by because I don't know. Um, but I have some of this already in my stash in a different color wave. Now, this is a little thinking outside of the box for me in terms of color because the purple is a color that I do like. But these lavenders or pinks and even the greens are not something that i will often be attracted to but i do like this line of fabric and so yeah that's why i picked up two meters of each i don't have any plans for it yet but i'm sure i will somewhere down the road these four are by um northcott i know that and they're in their line uh, of batiks called banyan uh batiks and these particular ones are called color me banyan strata and i really like the stripes in them but they are batiks and just the colors just all go together so well and they're fairly bold and you know what i said about orange and yellow uh earlier about the lone star well guess what i've got some more yellow and some more orange i've got some green in here too which again is something i don't usually uh gravitate towards of course, I got my blue and my purple, which I do. And the last one is also by Stone, uh, is by uh, Northcott, and it is Stonehenge. And of course, you know the Stonehenge line is probably uh, Northcott's most famous line of fabrics. There's quite a different, or quite a few different patterns and color waves that you can pick in that line. And this is one of them. And I've have some more of this in another color wave as well. So. Yeah, I did okay. Now, what did I pay for this? Well, if I'd paid regular price before the sale, it would have been about $250. Free shipping for those of us that live in Canada or in Ontario anyways, if it's over 100 bucks, I believe, with them. Um, so I got free shipping, but I got my 40% or these one didn't all come from the 40% off. I think one, some of them came from the 35. But overall, my whole order came to about $191 including tax so that was pretty good uh for that because i got one two three four five six seven eight nine i got 18 meters of fabric for that price so i did okay on the black friday sale um and that's about you know all i did do on black friday um so however Walter got a fr Black Friday deal, and I'm going to see if I can find that picture. Um, just back to me for a second as I look for it. Um, I should have had these all set up beforehand, but, you know, I'm an idiot. Um, okay, here we go. So, remember my discussion about the problem I was having with my iron, my Rowenta, my big tank steam iron. That was my dream iron that Walter bought for me for my birthday about 18 months ago. And I have been loving it. And then it blew up. And now I'm hating it. And I have done some research more on Rowenta. And I hate Rowenta. Yeah, I'm going to say it. Now, there's going to be those of you out there who have had a Rowenta iron for 10 or 15 years. And it's still going strong. I'm happy for you. Because the old Rowentas do last a long time. But from my research, I have found that the new Rowentas, they've changed their sealant that's in them or something. And I guess after about a year's time, the sealant goes. And that's why your iron link, link, links leaks or blows up on you or whatever. Um, you can reach out to Rowenta and they won't reach back. I've had that experience with them as well, too. So their customer experience, from my experience, remember everything I say here is just my opinion. You, yours may differ. I hope, hope you've had better experiences than I have. But Rowenta doesn't even want to talk to you. They don't even look at you. They don't even acknowledge that you've sent them an email. So I'm done with Rowenta. Mm -hmm. And it's not my first bad experience with Rowenta. I should have learned from the first bad experience. But anyways, that iron is toast. And from what I heard from people commenting about what I said about the Rowenta and other things online, the, the verdict was... Buy cheap irons. If you're going to use a steam iron, buy a cheap one because then it's disposable. Because once water goes in an iron, that's the end of it. And that's very true. Well, 
Walter being Walter, he did more research on it. And apparently the way an average steam iron makes steam is it drips water down onto the sole plate on the inside and that creates your steam. And what happens is if too much water gets stripped there, it, it'll leak out and it causes all kinds of problems. And there's other things with them as well. So the conclusion I made for myself at that point in time was buy cheap Black & Decker or T-Fell or something like that. Don't spend more than about 30 bucks on an iron. Use it when it goes, buy another one. So I bought a cheap $20 iron from Amazon that was a Black & Decker and that's what I started to use. Was I happy with the way it performed? Well, it wasn't like having a tank iron with steam that would blast you out of the room, um, but it was serving its purpose. So then Walter says to me a few days later, okay, I got a Black Friday sale. And um, I said, oh, you bought me a Christmas gift? Yay. And he goes, well, sort of bought it for us. And he says, it's too big to hide when it comes. Well, it, it arrived very quickly. In fact, I think it was only about two days after he'd ordered it or whatever, it showed up. And yes, it was a big box. He wasn't home at the time that it arrived. And uh, so I kind of looked at the label and saw it was marked as coming from a company called Reliable. Reliable makes irons. Very expensive. Well, they make irons in all price ranges, but they have industrial steam irons that are a tank iron. I call them a tank iron. I don't know. But they have a boiler in them. And they work very differently from the way the Rowenta worked. The Rowenta basically had a pump in it. And I think that was part of the problem. The pump went. It got corroded or whatever. Um, the Reliable actually have a boiler. And it boils the, the water inside of it. And it builds up pressure. And that's how you get your steam. Also, if you buy the upper end reliable uh, iron, the 4000 IS, parts are replaceable on it. They have a lesser model, the 3000 IS, but the parts are not replaceable. You can't interchange them. Whereas this one, you can, the 4000. So that's, guess what Walter bought? The 4000. I'm going to show you a picture of it. I warn you, this is an ugly iron. Okay. And there it be. This is my new, our new, 4000 IS reliable steam iron. This is the boiler. Stainless steel. You have two switches you switch on. You have a pressure gauge. You have a pressure valve. You can adjust the amount of steam that goes through it or the pressure with this knob. There's the iron. It's an ugly sucker. This is a boot that you put on the iron to protect it. Uh, Walter bought that separately. This is a little rubber mat that you can sit on top of it or you can take it and set it wherever and you can put your iron down this way You because you can't put this iron up on its end, okay? Because the way the hose goes through it. This part is all replaceable. Parts on here are all replaceable if anything goes wrong with it. Yes. It is a monster of an ugly iron, but oh my goodness, the steam that comes out of it is wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Now, it does take a while to come up to temperature uh, for the steam part. Um, they say in the manual 10 minutes. It's more like 20. It takes 20 minutes to get up to uh, the pressure that you want. But you can still use the iron dry while it's doing that. Um, and that heats up very, very quickly. It takes two liters of water or eight cups. You have a, a long, you can see the corner of it here. There's this long plastic tube. And on the other end of that plastic tube is our marks. It's basically a dipstick. You take the cap off over here, put it down inside, and you can figure out how much water you have left in it. But it does have a low water uh, indicator on it as well. So you're okay. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful iron, but not in looks. I've been using it now. We, we got it last week. Um, and I just love it. I absolutely love it. Now, you're going to ask, what's the price on this? 
Regular price on this particular iron is $800. And you just fell off your chair, didn't you? And you're saying, but Steve, you said you weren't going to expend a lot of money on an iron. Well, technically I didn't. Walter spent it. But yes, I know what I said and never say never. We've gone industrial. But Walter got this one on a Black Friday sale from the company and it was $600. Yes, it's still a lot of money. This is a refurbished model, but it comes with a full guarantee as if it was like a brand new one out of the box. And essentially, I don't know, th this looks brand new. There's, it, it's shiny, new, it works fine, it's great. Um, So, you know, refurbished or whatever. So we, sa we saved, and when I say we, I mean Walter again, saved a couple hundred bucks on it. We'll see. We are taking a chance. Who knows? The warranty on this is only one year again. Uh, but as I said, you can replace parts if they go. There isn't a pump in it, so you don't have to worry about that going. And they recommend that you use uh, half distilled water and half tap water in this. They say you can use tap water all, but they recommend the half and half. So that's what we're using in this as well. Now, something here as an aside to how this works with a lot of steam. When I use it and I iron my pieces or whatever, they feel really, really crisp after I have used a little steam on them. They feel like fabric feels when you first get it off the bolt in most cases. And I don't know why that is. And I didn't know if that was my imagination. So I said this to Walter and Walter said he had read that because of the way the steam works on something like this, it does actually um, make the fabric feel a little crisper. So the fabric has sort of the feel of batiks. And I love that feel. And I love working with fabric that feels like that because it just, you know, um, it goes through your sewing machine so much nicer. Um, this is why cleaners, clothes cleaners, use these type of machines. As well so if you've ever had a shirt laundered at a dry cleaners um and when they and when you've got it it's nice and crisp feeling that's because they use these kind of irons in fact this particular brand of iron is very very popular amongst with dry cleaners so yeah we've gone industrial uh with this and i'm hoping for the best that we won't have the problems we had with the rowento with this one also their customer service seems very very good too so, and there is a, uh, they're just located not that far into Toronto from us that if we needed to go into the repair depot, it's easy enough to get there with. So right now I'm considering this a win-win, but just in case I have my cheap irons sitting in storage <laughs> in reserve for it all. So yeah, Merry Christmas to us. Okay. So that takes me on to what else is coming up. Craft and chat tomorrow, Wednesday, December the 1st, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The link is in the show notes. Uh, those of you that are regulars know what I'm talking about. Others of you, it's just a, a Zoom virtual time to get together, work on our projects, have light conversation, no drama, and just be inspired and share with each other. And it's always fun. I always have a great time on uh, Craft and Chat, and I think the people that come to it usually do too. So it starts at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come whenever you feel like coming. Go when you feel like going. We usually stop at about 4 p.m. in the afternoon. So hope to see you there. Okay, that takes me to Subscribers Quilt of the Week. This is from Nancy George. Uh, we have never had a submission from Nancy George before, so let's take a look at what Nancy says. This week's quilt is from a new subscriber, and her name is Nancy George, and she's from Buckeye, Arizona. And she writes, Hi, Stephen. I've enjoyed finding your YouTube channel this past year. You've asked for pictures of quilts. Attached are pictures of a paper piece pineapple quilt that I just finished for a very cherished family friend. My guess is that Kay started these blocks back in 2016. Sometime in 2017, she asked if I'd like to finish the quilt for the bed in her guest room. She sent me the black fabric and the print used as centers of the blocks. A balance of fabrics came from both her and my stash. 
Kay started her quilting 40 years ago, making templates from cereal box cardboard, tracing with a pen and hand cutting all the pieces. I was a garment sewing sewer and moved on to table runners wall hangings. Now I focus my quilting on making lap quilts for Hospice of Valley here in Arizona. 300 plus quilts without making much of a dent in my stash. Her son Rich let me know that Kay recently passed. Over the years we talked about the quilt many many times. Her comments, no hurry, truly not true. He asked if I could finish the quilt and send it to him in um, WI, I think is that West Wisconsin, on its way to its new home in Wisconsin. Sorry if I got the initials wrong, but I'm not sure with um, American uh, short forms for states what they all are. Uh, the quilt measures 72 by 88 inches, and the block size are 7.5 inch squares. Okay, this is a gorgeous quilt. I have made a pineapple quilt myself before, and I know how much time they can take. But the detail in this and the colors are really, really nice. And there is a picture here as well of the of a close-up of the quilt, as you can see. Um, now, I'm just taking a look here to see if I can see the actual quilting on it. And I think this is just the top at the moment. So... Uh, Nancy, when you get this done, um, please send it along to me uh, to show me the actual finished product. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure this isn't quilted. I, I'm, I see some lines here. I think those are the blocks. But anyway, sorry if I've got that mixed up. But uh, I'm pretty sure it's not yet yeah, quilted. But nevertheless, it is still stunning. Absolutely stunning. Um, so thank you so much, uh, Nancy, for sending that on to me. And uh, yeah, if anybody else has some quilts they'd like me to feature, I don't have any more after Nancy's. So I'm looking for more. And, you know, if you've sent me one before, you can send me others. Not a problem. So thanks again, Nancy. This is a wonderful quilt. And I think I have one quilt to show next week. And then I'm out again so if you'd like to show me something and if you're uh, you've already shown me something before but you got something else please send me a picture of it email addresses in the show notes a little blurb about that and i will be happy to feature it here on a future edition of the idiot quilter so that brings us to the youtube channel of the week this one i discovered very recently it's called Tilf tiffany's quilting this week's life. youtube channel is called tiffany's quilting life and this is a very popular uh, YouTube channel, which I just recently stumbled upon. She has over 15,000 subscribers, so that tells you how popular she is. And she has a wide variety of videos. And if you take a look at her playlist right here, she has, it looks like sew alongs. Uh, she also does long arm quilting. She has some uh, time lapse videos, which are really fun to watch, where she takes you from the beginning to the end of a quilt. Uh, construction process in very fast speed. Um, she has mini quilts. Um, she has bag making videos. She has a lot of different types of videos um, to do with quilting and sewing. So there's something here for everyone. So I want to go back here to her uh, little teaser video just so you get a feel for what she's all about. So I'm looking forward to uh, delving deeper into the videos that she has up online and I have subscribed to her as well. So I'm really kind of excited that I have found Tiffany's Quilting Life. And so what's on my uh, vision board for a future project? A lot of things. I'll need a lot of future to get to them all. But this week I'm going to show you one that's a free pattern. Uh, downloadable from Jordan Fabrics and everybody knows Jordan Fabrics um, and I think I put a link to this pattern in the show notes as well if you're interested in it um, 
but it's called the Chevron Shuffle Pillow. And uh, I needed some I need some new pillow slips for my cushions on my uh, sectional in the rec room. So I thought this might be uh, a great pattern to use. And of course, this it's week's great. pattern from my vision board is one that I just found recently on Jordan Fabrics. And I have reviewed Jordan Fabrics YouTube channel many, many times. And often on that channel, she does provide a free uh, pattern link for whatever she is demonstrating. And this one caught my eye because I need to make some new pillow slips for my cushions in my rec room and this one I really like the design of. Now of course I'd make it in a different uh, fabric line, different color scheme, but I really like this. It's called the Chevron Shuffle Pillows and it looked really easy to make. It's mostly half square triangles and just by the way that you lay it out you can get several different designs and she shows you uh, different designs that you can do by rearranging the half square triangles. Uh, Jordan Fabrics uh, YouTube videos are always very very easy to follow and this is a PDF file and as I said it's a free pattern uh, for you to download. So I've put the link in the show notes below so you can check this out if this is something that maybe appeals to you. And so this week on The Idiot Quilter Presents, you know that I have moved away from interviews and into what I call musings. Just little short little, I guess you could call them rants maybe or whatever. Whatever I'm thinking about currently and I just share my thoughts with you. Um, it's all about me. <laughs> yeah, my channel, me. Um, but that doesn't mean that I have stopped doing interviews. In fact, I'm lining up an interview for the near future with uh, um, actually a, a person who just sent me a picture of her lovely creations that I'm going to feature next week on The Idiot Quilter. Um, but in the meantime, I'm sharing with you some thoughts about different things. And this past week, I shared my thoughts about male quilters, about being a male quilter, and about what that experience is like. Because it is a different experience from what it's like to be a, a woman in the quilting world. So if you're interested, check out... Uh, uh, this week's uh, The Idiot Quilter Presents Musings and their link for that one is in the show notes below. Okay, so that takes me to one of my quilts that I'm going to critique. This is one I made a year ago. It's a Christmas quilt um, and I've been showing you lately a lot of uh, my Christmas things because yesterday I dug them all out of the crawl space. Um, I had forgotten about some of the things that I had made. Um, I really don't need any more Christmas table runners. I made a lot of those in the past couple of years. Um, but anyways, this is one of the quilts that I made a year ago. And it is now uh, hanging over one of my uh, couches in my family room uh, for Christmas. Um, and so I'm going to share, you, share my ideas about that particular quilt with you right now. This week's quilt of my own that I'm going to critique is one I made a year ago. And I made this from a pattern. And it's, I call it the Christmas tree quilt. Now, I'm not sure what the pattern was that I used. I have a feeling it was a free pattern that I downloaded, possibly from Jordan Fabrics, because I get a lot of free patterns from them. But anyways, here it is. And I'm very happy with the way it turned out. Um, so you can see it's principally made up of half square triangles. So a lot of half square triangles, and this is where you want to use possibly uh, thangles uh, for creating uh, these half square triangles because when you're making that many, it's really fast and it's very accurate. Now, if you take a look a little closer at it, I'll show you the quilting on here because I did something a little bit daring, a little bit different. And uh, what I essentially did was I used a ruler that um, I think I got it from, it's a Wesley, Wesley, Wesley uh, design ruler um, that you just follow around and it pivots. And so you, there's a hole in it so you can put a little pin in it and you pivot the ruler all the way around to create these designs. Um, I think I've got another picture here that may show this a little better. Just let me go to it. And here it is. So see, here you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, it goes all the way around. And I did that in each one of these uh, quadrants on the quilt. And I think it turned out pretty good, considering that, you know, 
I did this on a domestic machine because last year I did not have a long arm machine. And I did that uh, for most of these until I got to the outside. And then I, you can see here, I did a little bit of wavy uh, walking foot quilting in around uh, the inside and outside borders. Um, the binding turned out nice and this is going on display as part of my Christmas decorations uh, this Christmas. Um, and I'm really looking forward to digging it out of the crawl space where I put all my Christmas decorations and enjoying it again during this Christmas season. And so that brings me to my next segment about online fabric stores that I review. And thank you. I've gotten a lot of positive comments about that. People saying they really appreciate me doing these reviews. So that's good. And I continue and I figure on continuing doing them too as well. So this one is for the store that I just recently went to. It's a brick and mortar store as well as an online. And it's where I did the big haul with batting. Um, and wide back fabric that I showed, uh, I think I showed that last week um, here. So now I'm going to do a little bit more serious review of this particular store, which is called Kawartha. This week's Quilting. online quilt store is one that's in my area. It's only about 45 minutes away from me. And I have ordered things from their website. And I've also been to their brick and mortar store. And just as an aside here, their brick and mortar store is really cute. It's in a really nice uh, country style uh, log cabin-ish type home. And next door to it is a old church which has been decommissioned and they use that as a storage area for a lot of their batting and things like that. So it's really worth the visit just to see the store itself. But, uh, and you know that last week I talked about my haul that came from Kawartha Quilting and Sewing. Um, so now I'm going to take a look at their uh, website. So you see on the first page that they do deal with Gamel, which is their long arm company. They do sell those machines and they do do custom quilting. And I think they may have classes as well. Um, they deal with brother sewing machines and quilting machines, etc. And the cutting machines. They have Bernina sewing machines. They do have a very extensive collection of the AccuQuilt accessories and the system for cutting applique or blocks. They have Kimberbell um, fabrics and uh, embroidery programs as well. They deal with uh, Filtech, uh, which also makes Glide uh, thread and Superior threads and Aurifil. And they do have regular size uh, fabric as well as a great selection of wide backing fabric. And of course, batting, which if you saw that video I made last week on the Idiot Quilter, um, you will see uh, how much I bought there of batting because it was such a great price. It was on sale. And then they have many uh, accessories as well as paper pantographs, which is good to know as well if you're a long arm quilter. So looking down on their home page, we have uh, they have a, a sale on 15% off thread. It, right now it's Black Friday coming up. So they have a sale there. Um, and 15% off all fabrics. So that's a good price too. And here's a list of all their brand names and the latest arrivals. Um, so their fabrics per price uh, right now is $17.84 and that's for a meter, which is not a bad price, but they do have other higher price fabrics as well. Their uh, wide backing, for example, ranges in price from about $28 to $32 a meter. Um, and I'm just going to check here to see if they this is listed as meter or if it's listed by um, yardage. You know how I feel about that. I feel if you're Canadian, it should be in meters. Uh, okay, it's not really telling me this. So I'm not completely sure. But I know in the store it's by the meter, so it's probably that as well. And this is their location as well. They're in Bethany, Ontario, which is a tiny little community uh, just north uh, east of me, about 45 minute drive or less, might be even less than that, might be only half an hour. So it's, it's very convenient for me to uh, get there. Um, 
So let's explore their fabrics in a little bit more detail. Let's go to 44 inch wide, which is pretty much standard. Let's see. Well, their prices range pretty good, $15.29 and up. Uh, and as I said, I think that's per meter. And they have a pretty good selection here. Now, of course, they're featuring their Christmas ones because at the time of recording, it, we're moving into the Christmas season. And they do let you know if it's something is sold out right up front, so that's always good. And they do have a little chat feature here, which is a virtual assistant, I believe. Let's just click on it. Um, yeah, this one, I've used it before. It's basically a, a virtual assistant kind of a thing. But they're very easy to call by phone or to send them an email, and they answer very, very quickly. So yeah, a really good selection of fabrics, 27 pages of them. So that's nice. Now, can you search by? Yes, you can. You can search by brand and they show you how many they have. They have a lot of Motive, a lot of Northcott. Um, and then they have Bernatex Fabrics, Free Spirit, Kimberbell. Yep, they have a really good selection of fabrics. Um, if you're looking for something in Brother Sewing Machines, let's take a look. There are not many places in our area or across Canada that deal with Brother uh, sewing machines. Uh, that's very much more an American thing. So here you have, looks like they have a full array. A lot of them are sold out right now, but you know, there is a supply problem during COVID. So that could be the problem, but they do have a good selection of sewing machines. And I think they will service your sewing machine as well, which is also very important. Um, they have Bernina and let's see, what do they have in Bernina's? Yeah, they've got everything you pretty much would like to choose from in Bernina's as well. Um, so we know about their sewing machines, of course, their long arm and let's take a look here. Yep, so they've got their price there, and I'm assuming that's in Canadian dollars. So let's go for 26 inch just to compare, because, yeah, if that's in Canadian dollars, that's pretty expensive. Um, considering that my Lucy from APQS is a 26 inch one, and with tax and everything and the shipping and whatnot, uh, it cost me $22,000, so... Now, maybe there's other things you get with this. I'm not sure, but stitch regulator. Well, it looks like you're getting just the, oh, they have horizontal and vertical channel locks. Okay, well, you know, Gemmel are expensive machines. They're very industrial. Um, but then again, what long arm isn't industrial in a sense? So that's a potential there. Kimberbell. I know a lot of people are really into uh, Kimberbell. So let's take a look at machine embroidery CDs because that's basically what Kimberbell is really famous for. And yeah, you can get the CDs. Now CDs are old technology, so you want to keep that in mind. Uh, it doesn't look like you can download these designs. You have to get them uh, on the CD and so you're going to have to have a way of being able to transfer those to your embroidery machine. Um, so that's something to keep in, in consideration. I don't know why companies are still producing uh, CDs because if you buy a new computer, uh, most of them don't come automatically with a CD uh, player. You, you need to go out and buy uh, one that you can plug into your computer if you need that technology. Let's take a look at accessories. Needles, paper pantographs, quilt patterns. Let's take a look at their quilt patterns. See what they have to offer. Okay, so they have quite a few. A lot of them are sold out. Well, they have quite a few, but it's not that great. And I'm wondering, these look like you when you buy them. Let's just take one that's in stock. 
and uh, see if you have the option to download it. I have a feeling you do not. It is a paper product. Yeah, that's not downloadable. And uh, I'm curious about their shipping. So Canada, so let's just see to my house. It probably comes by Canada Post. Yeah, standard shipping, $13.99. So I wonder if that increases uh, which, if you uh, buy more or if that's just a flat rate. Now, if I was to buy that uh, pattern, and that pattern was, how much was the pattern? The pattern itself was $19.99. So I'm paying almost as much for one pattern to ship it as what the pattern's worth. And so that would turn me off. It also turns me off that I can't download it. Um, so I wouldn't be going there. Now, if you spend over $300, you do get free shipping as well. Um, I don't believe that was on batting, but it could be. Um, okay, so what else should we check out here? Oh, let's get rid of that out of my cart, first of all, because I really don't want it. Um, oh, there's more information about their shipping. Okay, so if it's under $300, and it, here in Ontario, it's $13.99 flat rate. So they have flat rates, and then they have flat rates for other provinces as well. Um not sure about international shipping. They don't really say. So that might be something you would have to email them about if you want to order outside of Canada. Um, now, I'm just trying to figure out how to get rid of this. Oh, here we go. Remove. Bye-bye. Okay. So uh, what else is an accessory? I don't know what Eddie Crest is. Let's check that out. Um, we are an Eddie Crest dealer in Ontario. We'll offer the same price as factory direct and delivery and set up for you. Okay, it sounds like it's furniture. But uh, there doesn't seem to be any pictures. Um, okay, so it may be furnishing. Funny, no picture of that. So I guess that's something you'd have to go into the store and really check out. I don't imagine you'd really want to order um, sewing machine uh, furniture uh, online because shipping would probably cost you quite a bit. Um, they have gift cards, rulers, the usual kind of things. And they have a rewards program as well. And uh, I have signed up for that. And um, I think for every $100, you get $1 off. Or for every $100, you get one point or something that equals a dollar. I'm not sure. Something like that. Um, but anyways, so yeah, um, I'm really impressed with your store. Their online seems okay, but I think if you're able to visit the store... Um, it might be a little better uh, so that you can see what they have to offer. And like I said, the store itself is just really cute uh, to check out. Um, oh, and they have a uh, newsletter as well. So, yeah. So that's Kawartha Quilting and Sewing. And uh, I think I will be going back to them many times. So that's the end of this week's episode. I hope you uh, got something from it and I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you are going to have a really great week and I hope you're going to be digging out of your closet your homemade Christmas items, whether it be little figurines or table runners or full-size quilts or whatever you've been making for Christmas. Because you know, I think putting up at Christmas time the things that you have made from one year to the next year is a nice touch. Yeah, you can all go designer and have a color theme or a theme like the ones on YouTube that do videos about um, home decorating at Christmas. But, you know, I think the best decorations are the ones that you made because those are the ones that you made with love. And I think it is great excuse Christmas time for displaying your creative talents. So don't be afraid to put those things out at Christmas time for others to enjoy.
and just for yourself to enjoy as well. So you have a great week. I hope you do something creative, and we'll see you next week. Bye for now.